Hello, everybody. These are Ellie's puppy. Well, puppies, yeah. And I thought we'd just do a little feeding video so everybody can kind of get to know them and follow them along as they're young. This here is a brindle boy. Starburst? Nope, it's not Starburst. So they are three days old today. They were supposed to go in today for their tails, but our vet got real busy, so we weren't able to get them in today um, to get tails done, but they're going in at 8 o'clock in the morning. And um, we're going to be running in different directions tomorrow. Um, Aria, I don't know if anybody's been following Aria, she um, has lymphoma, and she's got to be at the vet um, in Nashville tomorrow by 9 a.m. And the puppies have to be in Erin, which is the opposite direction, at 8 a.m. So we're going to be, Eric and I will be running in different directions tomorrow with getting the puppies done and getting Aria in for her treatment and uh, try and get this so that you can see the babies while they're eating. Um, I had to prop the camera up so I can't really move it around. Um, and it's my phone, so it may fall down. And it's plugged in because my phone is usually dead. Um, so these are all of our babies. They're three days old today, so they'll be four days old tomorrow. Um, let's see if I can maybe get two of them in here. I don't know if I can. I definitely wouldn't be able to get two on camera. But Aria has been doing really well. Um, these babies were a little bit of a challenge in the beginning. Um, Ellie went into labor about, she gave us her first puppy about nine o'clock in the morning. I don't know, some of you may already know this because you follow along um, on the Facebook page. But we're gonna try and put stuff on YouTube as well. So the morning of the 26th, she gave us her first puppy at nine o'clock. And I'd have to grab the sheet to be exact on the times, but uh-oh, no, 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 come here, come here. You're okay, you're okay. Ellie, Ellie, that means there's one underneath of you. There you go, good girl. There you go, who is this one? This one, this little blue boy, the blue boy. He's the one who was, he said his, his, his mom didn't realize where he was. He's hungry too, I get him all fed. Maybe I can introduce you guys to everybody. But So she went into labor about 9 o'clock. And then it was two hours before she gave us the next puppy. And two hours. And then she gave us two at a time. And had been giving her calcium all along. And sometimes these girls just need some calcium to help them out. So um, maybe was thinking, you know, finally got her calcium level up. And she would start having some better contractions and producing puppies. Well, um and we never really saw even any visual contractions. She just kind of would stand up and um, kind of hump her back. And, that, you know, you really couldn't see any contractions actually happening um, as far as a, a strong one. So uh, we decided after uh, two hours of her not giving us another puppy, which she had been two hours in between each one of the puppies prior to that, um, that we would take her into the vet. And when we got there, you know, we kind of explained what had been happening and that we were concerned that if she was this slow that, you know, we didn't know how many she had in there for sure, but we knew that she was still full. So uh, we knew that, or kind of thought that, you know, given what we had seen already, that she was probably going to wear out on us. And uh, the vet thought that that was probably the case and that she was already wore out. And once he got in there, he decided, or he noticed that, the whole right side of her uterus wasn't even moving. So the likelihood that she would have delivered those puppies was very, very low. Um, luckily we had made that decision and gotten her in and our vet was able to kind of, they put the clinic on hold and everybody literally went in the surgery room. They had two, two vets in there working on her and uh, got everybody out and they were all good. I know you guys are all hungry. Um, so, we brought him home, and Ellie was very, very, very slow to wake up. We were really concerned about her. I rode in the back of the um, vehicle with her the whole way home, just continually stimulating her and trying to get her warmed up, you know, coming out of anesthesia. Um, so 
she was she was rough that whole night and um the next day she you know we we got her warmed up and got her home um in this whelping box um we have a we use um pig farrowing heating pads that are completely sealed so it doesn't matter if they get um wet or anything like that so it enables us to be able to clean in here um and still keep the heating pad in here um, i prefer the heat on the floor i don't really care for heat lamps just because of the fire heat hazard um, these things are um, they're meant to be out in the barns and the pig slop so we can um, we can use them yes aiden you are my helper um, that's aiden he's my helper um, but the the heating pads we i really like them underneath it here so we were able to get the puppies and her normally i have a section of the the heat doesn't cover the entire bottom of the box so um the females can get off of the heat while the puppies are still on the heat so they can lay in here without laying on the heat and the puppies can be on the heat while nursing um, it's kind of a, a cool way that things just happen to fit in here um obviously we order them a certain size but um it worked out well i guess is what i'm what i'm trying to say um and I, I can recommend it to anybody. Um, so she, we actually moved the heat over so that she was on the heat and we were able to get her warmed up. She started coming around that night and she was feeling better. And then uh, obviously we're, every two hours we're feeding these puppies. So, um, and constantly checking on her. And by probably about eight o'clock in the morning, she had really come around and we knew she was gonna be okay. So that was really, really, really good news. Oh, I forgot to introduce you to number two here. Hold on. Oh. Now you're helping. One of the puppies just pulled the camera down. Hold on. Hey, get this back up here. And I'm your helper. Yes, Aiden, you are my helper. All right. This is the Brindle Girl. <laughs> she just want to know where her bottle is now. She's been eating. That's no. This is not Starburst yet. We'll try and find Starburst next. So at that point, we knew that Ellie was going to be okay, and um, she's been great ever since. She's picking up a little bit on her milk production. Um, obviously, with 11 puppies, we don't expect her to keep up, and we generally bottle feed. I can't even say generally. We always bottle feed every litter, anyways, just to supplement them. Um, it helps us to know everybody's getting their desired amount. We don't ever leave our bitches um, if, if we're sleeping or, you know, outside or you know, not kind of somewhere close where we can either have the monitor with us or physically in here with them. We don't, we don't leave them unattended. Um, it's just our personal choice. I know a lot of people do and that's, that's their choice. Um, I tend to tend to worry about them. I've seen really good moms um, have accidents, and it's you know obviously not intentional, but sometimes they'll lay on a puppy, and um, just we've gone through it, so um, made some changes, and uh, everybody's got to do what works for them. So that's what our protocol is as of now, and I'm not going to say that things aren't going to change because you always live and learn. But uh, that's what we do for now. Whoa, this one is angry doesn't like to burp um, so everybody's doing really well now all these puppies are lively and angry and huge puppies I mean you see these paws I don't even know where the camera's at look at that paw <laughs> there's number two done let's see 